Hello and welcome back to the Jewels with Jam podcast. I am your host Gigi and I hope you're well. I just wanted to say thank you all so much for the support, your interest, your questions. It definitely goes a such a long way and whilst you are here, please don't forget to hit that sub button to be notified when I do post new videos and if you are returning, welcome back and if you are new, welcome. So, um I posted a video um about the sun um because i wanted to talk about the planets individually because i feel like a lot of the time we're given surface level definitions for example um how the sun represents individuality creativity however um sometimes we don't even know what that means really you know so um now that we have gone through the 12 signs individually and we have an understanding of the signs individually we can now move on to understanding the planets so essentially there are 10 planets namely they are the sun the moon mercury venus mars jupiter neptune uranus pluto as well as saturn So um in your birth chart and I explained this quite extensively in the sun video as well there are 12 houses or 12 rooms or 12 sections parts so naturally there will be houses in your chart that don't have any planets or that are considered empty it's not that there are no signs on the houses the houses will have names which are the signs it's just that um you know because there are 12 signs and there are only 10 planets naturally we can't have planets in all of the houses sometimes it does happen that there will be a cluster of planets and by cluster i just mean there will be um a number of planets namely more than 3 that will be in one part in one house in one room in one piece of that astrological birth chart or that pie chart um just you know to give you a visual of what it is that I'm talking about so um there will be a cluster of planets that will be in one particular house and that obviously will show that there is more energy being exerted in that house it can be any house it can be in any sign as well and it can be any of the 10 planets that can be more than one in that particular house you know um peace part etc etc um so you know we spoke about the sun in my previous video and if you did miss that one please do go back and check it out um to also you know come to your own understanding of you know what it represents for you and um you know what your understanding might be of the sun and how it relates to astrology how it relates to the natal chart and how it relates to you know synastry charts and synastry charts are just charts that are made up of um two or more birth dates and how they basically interact how those two charts act how those three um people's birth information interact with each other So um today we're going to be talking about the moon and honestly my mind was just already bubbling over with excitement to you know to get started because my mind was like okay I want to talk about the moon in general what it means to the earth and its significance then I wanted to move on to you know the moon and the mother um then I wanted to move on to the moon as a receptor you know the moon and women and you know how it pertains to you know our true selves the moon phases the moon and the soul and also the moon and the cycles of women as well and you know how it how it reveals um, um in context to how you may re- relate to other people and of course how we can use both the powers of the moon which are in intu- uh, which are intuition and logic and um intuition and logic and how we can work with both of those energies simultaneously. I think a lot of the time we have been told, you know, no, you need to make use of one and not the other. And usually a lot of people will tell you even psychologists, you know, doctors, 
almost everyone even your brother your sister your cousin will tell you you know you need to become more logical it's not really attractive or it's not really doing you any favors when you are operating from an emotional standpoint all of the time hmm, you can't let emotions run you Hmm. and i'm there like okay why can't we have both you know work for us at the same time why do we have to choose i mean why can't we make use of both i mean we have both so why not you know um use both of those strengths to our advantage why are we not encouraged to why are we encouraged to think that one can work without the other and isn't everything essentially about balance isn't everything essentially about balancing your negatives with your positives your good with your bad you know your shadow work with your light work etc etc so um with all this commotion going on you know internally let me just start with the basics and um the basics are that the moon as we know it you know is the partner to the sun a lot of people will say you know um the sun is the father and you know the mother is the moon but then i'm like isn't saturn the father and then the moon being the mother like it's very complicated it just depends on how you perceive it i don't think that there is no right or wrong answer to be honest because at the end of the day we all have our own understandings of you know astrology we all come across different information of course um most of the information can be the same on the surface level but i think the more you dig deeper into astrology is the more you will uncover that a lot of the things are kind of subjective so um yes the partner to the sun depending like i said on how you perceive it um you know where we experience daylight we are in the presence of the sun where we experience moonlight we are in presence of the moon and the moon it goes through so many phases you know it goes through so many changes um hence you'll find that in astrology um the moon will describe the person's temperament how moody they are and you know etc i think i think the moon really is just an observation of the cycles um and the changes that the moon endures so it's like especially within the birth chart it's like an indication of what type of changes you will likely deal with so um depending where your moon is that is where you're likely to be the most unstable i don't want to say unstable but you know but it's more where you're going to go through a lot of changes because you know the moon in its nature is fluid you know it's quite flexible it 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 changes at the drop of the hat emotions are quite you know um ever changing so emotions are not really something that we can depend on for a long time because you know feelings and emotions change we have bad days we have good days we are excited sometimes sometimes we are not that excited sometimes we're bored sometimes we're feeling creative sometimes we go through you know um a blockage so really um where the moon is in your chart will determine where you're the most you know unstable um I don't want to say unstable again but it will show where you're prone to changes yes that's the word where you're prone to changes um the things that you know will trigger you and then also the house that it's in will tell you the nature of you know those changes i have moon in my second house so my changes come when it comes to my self worth the things that i find valuable the things that i think are valuable so my thoughts about those things are quite um all i can say is that they change a lot they never they never remain the same the principles and the values that i hold close that i was raised with um those can definitely remain the same but i think everything else you know is subject to change because we are living in a world that you know that changes that is going through change currently so you know we can't be um ignorant to the fact that there are changes happening around us all the time so um like i said the moon goes through you know phases it goes through changes and um the moon is likely to describe the person's temperament how moody they can be um so you know the phases that the moon goes through i think there's about 8 if i'm not mistaken so um 
there's the new moon there's the waxing crescent there's the first quarter there's the waxing give it give us i hope that i'm saying it right um the full moon and then we also have the waning give us then we have the third quarter and we have the waning crescent i think i was actually born under the waning crescent i'm not too sure um so you know i don't know i don't know about anybody else however for me the moon is just a representation of birth life you know and death it's almost like um scorpio vibes kind of which is weird because you know the moon is in its detriment when it's in scorpio i suppose because the nature of scorpio can be a bit volatile can be a bit destructive if it is you know not evolved as it, you know as it should be but um yeah it reminds me of birth life and death um it reminds me that everything essentially goes through this cycle you know seasons change people grow people come out of or die in inverted commas of their physical body you know to morph and take on another form um and i also think that the moon you know is an integral part of the solar system as it it brings it brings balance you know to everything that's in the earth essentially you know um really because everything well is to me honestly everything is about balance so we might have you know the sun bringing in the sunlight we also need the night that brings in you know the moonlight we need the moon that that will bring in that that moonlight that will balance everything out for us because i can't imagine you know living in a world where we're constantly in daylight like that would just be craziness i don't know how we would actually deal with that now now i'm now i'm curious to know how the world would actually be if we never you know experienced any moonlight like that would be so interesting but um anyway i'm probably going to do that in my private time and maybe i'll mention it on the channel just to see what that would actually be like but for now though um there are eight phases as i mentioned that the moon goes through phases and there are eight phases that I had briefly mentioned but i just wanted to break them down um you know and give and give the meanings of each as it relates to um astrology so the first one being the new moon and this is just basically the start of the lunar cycle um i think this one is the best for setting you know your intentions for the month ahead or the weeks ahead um it's also making plans towards whatever you intend on actually executing um it's a time of fresh start and new beginnings and in astrology um if you were born under this moon it just basically means that your mind and your heart are aligned which is an exquisite quality to have i mean how many of us actually struggle on a daily basis like just getting our minds in tune with you know what we're feeling what's in our hearts what's at our core it is so difficult to um manage all of that because essentially we have so many distractions that are distracting us most of the time so it's really a beautiful quality to have your mind and your heart being balanced because essentially you've been gifted with that when you've been gifted with that ability to not be in discord with what you're thinking and what you're feeling that is like the best relief i mean um i would imagine that it would be something we can akin to moon in taurus seeing as you know the moon is exalted in taurus i think it would be that kind of vibe but also they can be a bit stubborn so you know it's a catch 22 number two the waxing moon okay so the um the waxing moon is just also um we can say it's the first sign um you know that the moon is about to be in full blossom like it's about to be in full bloom we are about to experience it in its true form um I, this is also another stage of planning it's like building up the courage building up the discipline the confidence that is needed to execute whatever your plans are um you know people that are born under this waxing moon um it's extremely crucial for these individuals to develop um you know confidence to develop independence to develop courage as well because those 
are the three things and also being consistent you know consistency i think is the main ingredient for anything to be successful really if you are consistent then you at least give it a fighting chance for um people around you to at least start trusting you if you say you're going to do a particular thing on a particular day at a particular time and you you know you abide and you adhere to you know your word then you know people are more likely to buy into your word they're more likely to buy into your product or whatever it is that you may be promoting um number three the first quarter so now the moon is kind of like you know it's reaching its full potential so now we can kind of say it's like it, it's 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 in half of its power if i can put it that way and um you know when we experiencing this first quarter it's 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 known for you know a time of reflection to really observe you know what you've been working on and perhaps to give yourself a pat on the back really to just celebrate yourself for all of the work that you that you may have put in so far into your goals and into your plans and into the execution because i think a lot of the times you know we have goals we have plans we have things we want to do but we're just not able to execute them because i mean hello life happens or we're just procrastinating you know and we're just kind of just like ah, oh, you know maybe not today maybe tomorrow you know so um this is the time really where you can pat yourself on the back for all of the efforts that you have been making towards reaching your goal um it's also you know a time of reflection just to pause you know and also just to just to appreciate self really because honestly we take for granted the things that we do go through when we are in pursuit of following our goals we actually don't realize that we put ourselves through the most okay you know um there's there's um there's this um rap artist actually her name is chica or chica i don't know i actually don't know if i'm pronouncing her name properly but um in one of her songs i think is i think the name of the song is song about you but there is a line where she says i know chasing the impossible takes some courage so if you somebody that you know is chasing after your dream you know a lot of people around you will tell you why are you even doing that you're wasting your time it's impossible you're never going to get there that takes a lot of courage to be able to still continue when people are kind of telling you you know what your ideas suck you're not going to be successful whatever you're trying to do you're not going to achieve you know it really can put the breaks on things you know um so i think i think it's so important for for us to have moments where we just appreciate ourselves for waking up every morning and going to a job and actually committing to those tasks you know committing to being a parent committing to being loving partners committing to being understanding siblings uh, sisters brothers you know there's a whole lot of things that we do that we tend to take for granted so um yeah the first um the first the first quarter is definitely a time for that like i said it's a time for reflection pause and self appreciation and um you know somebody was born under this moon this is an individual that is fond of action that loves you know a good challenge and um i actually never even knew that you know being born under this moon is actually something that is not common as the other ones i found that quite interesting so i just had to put that in there number 4 we've got the waxing gibbous as i said i don't know if i'm pronouncing this right but um cuz it could be gibbous or it could be gibbous so you know um do you correct me if i'm wrong um and basically the waxing gibbous or gibbous is just um the part of the moon that shows that we are just one step away from you know the moon being in its full power um in this time it's a time where we should be mindful or paying a lot of attention to the details of what's actually happening internally within ourselves and also externally being really self aware and you know aware of the environments that we are in and how they actually affect us because a lot of the times we are in spaces we are in environments we are around people that affect the way we the way we think the way we behave the way we do things so we really need to be mindful of that so during this time it's really important to be you know to just pay that much more attention to that so that you can be given you know um instruction 
according to your intuition so that you can be given instruction on the best ways to resolve the problems that you may have whether that be internally or externally so it's definitely a time to just be like okay now i can you know not relax but you know you can you can take you can take it all in with a pinch of salt and you know be honest with yourself and just allow things to just be allow things to just come and individuals born under this moon are prone to be more nurturing and a lot more calming like i said um this is a time where you can just sit back and just kind of be in the moment really be present um i think these people are extremely lucky as well because you know how many people are actually living in the moment right how many of us are actually like yolo to everything every second of the day we're just like yolo a lot of us are not a lot of us are living in five to ten year dimensions from the current dimensions that we are in so you know we need to be very mindful of that and number five being the full moon the moon in all its glory is officially here and you know it's ready for us to take full advantage you know of the power that it exudes um it's great for manifesting it's great for rituals you know and also if you're into you know divination definitely dope for that and you know people that are born under this moon tend to work really well with others and are great listeners as well i mean you know who wouldn't want to be a great listener listening is a skill right so that's definitely something i was like oh my gosh that is dope number six the waning gibbous or gibbous moon gibbous moon um this is when the moon starts to lose a bit of its power um as it relates to a time of reflection as well so um the same like the um the waxing gibbous i think it has you know it has a bit of the same the a bit of the same effect Um, because like i said it relates to a time of reflection and people that are actually born under this moon are highly self-aware and they have you know a unique opportunity for growth which is amazing i mean you know how many of us are really aware of ourselves are really self-aware are really in tune with you know ourselves really you know how many of us actually place ourselves in positions whereby we give ourselves the maximum opportunity for growth especially when it comes to you know growing our growing in consciousness because obviously you know with every year that passes by we we definitely do grow in age we definitely do grow older but how many of us are still maintaining you know the same patterns that we were maintaining when we were 19 20 21 you know and there's a lot of us that are still there we we haven't yet grasped the concept of doing you know the shadow work because you know we are indulging currently in distractions which is no fault of anyone's you know but um i think we should make an effort seeing as we are in the age of aquarius we are in the age you know of knowing information is literally at our fingertips we should be you know trying to do better and then number 7 the third quarter now this moon um you know this is now back to half of its power um this is a time to really let go of the things that do not serve the person that you're trying to become um any self limiting beliefs you know or fears that you might have you know even even thoughts of you know being stuck i think are things that one would need to let go of under this moon um these people born under this moon are more prone to nostalgia because you know sometimes we do look back and we're like ah oh, back then when things were so easy you know the other day i was just thinking about high school and how really the things that i was stressing about were really nothing compared to you know the current um i wouldn't really say stresses but the current challenges of life the current um pencils that color life um the current you know ups and downs that we go through you know to have <laughs> to have an experience of this current life that we are in in this dimension so you know um i think i think there's a lot of things that we we look at the past and we're like oh things were so much better then but then 
I think when you realize those moments, when you can have moments where you look in hindsight, I think that's when you also realize that, damn, there's been so much growth. Damn, there's been so many experiences. You know, there's been so many heartbreaks. You know, it's like word to my feet, you know, word to my past, you know, word to your heart because you've endured so much. You've been through so much. So a lot of us are in those moments. Um, It's just important to not stay in those moments, though, because obviously, you know, you need to keep it moving and be in the present at all times. Number eight, last but not least, the waning moon. This is the moon that shows us, you know, that it is almost again time for us to repeat the cycle um it's time for us to prepare for a new beginning to surrender to everything that you know that you don't have control over um it's a time where we need to remember to practice compassion and you know just dissolving the ego for a bit so to speak um you know a lot of a lot of things that happen in life we don't really have control over of course we need to be really careful because there are those people there are some parts of us where we just want to blame you know everything on other people blame everything on external forces besides our own you know projections you we have issues that we have not dealt with within ourselves we have wounds that we have not you know healed so i think it's important to just have moments where you're like okay this is something that i don't have control over but I am promising to myself to make sure that I step up to the plate and, you know, face whatever challenge it is that I'm dealing with. And that's really all you have to do. You just have to show up. The moon in astrology um, also represents the mother. So, um, you know, when I think of mother, the mother is essentially, you know, the first encounter we have with society, with the world. Um, you know, it's our first encounter with nurturing. It's our first encounter with having a support system. Um, and it, 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 you know, the relationship between, you know, you and your mother or your maternal guardian or whoever it is that is giving, that is nurturing you as a person, um, that essentially becomes, you know, an internal core that uh, an internal core self if i can if i can put it that way that is essentially morphed like you are being morphed by whichever maternal figure you have by you, you know your maternal figure is literally the person who is the first person to show you what nurturing is what it means what it looks like um you know essentially the sign that your moon is in it may or may not describe your mother but it may have it may describe the attributes of her personality um you know one will obviously get a full picture when you observe the aspects that are made to the moon which will obviously change that energy completely um the aspects like i've always mentioned um you know any aspects that that's made to any planet from another planet um these are the things that tend to color the picture of how you relate to your mother especially you know aspects made from the moon to another planet or from a planet to the moon this will definitely um you know tell the story even further as to how you relate to her and you know how you may relate I think I just did that, but <laughs> but yes, you you get what I'm trying to say. How you may relate to her, or how she may relate to you, um, you know. But I think it's the other way around because essentially you are the one with the said moon and the aspects, not her. So you are gonna experience her according to the aspects that you have in your birth chart. Of course, I think you know what. As soon as you're made aware of the aspects and what they are and you can sort of make sense of it yourself that is when you can become more self-aware when those aspects tend to come out to play i think that's when you can be like oh okay gosh this is what my moon square saturn is doing right now or this is what my moon square neptune is doing right now you know um it becomes more clearer you're able to become more self-aware when you do go into when you do go deeper into astrology, you start noticing that actually certain parts do really come up, <laughs> you know, especially when it comes to the moon, because the moon is something you deal with on a second to second, 
you know every single minute hour second you are dealing with different emotions you are dealing with different situations you are deal you are just you are just dealing you are just a person who's just you know um so you know like i said the aspects made to the moon are very important even um aspects made to the moon from external planets are very important as well because like i said this will color in your experiences of your maternal figure um so i also wanted to mention the fact that i think it's important that we remember that we may be born um we may have the same mother but have different moons and have different aspect which essentially means that we will experience our mother in different ways right like how mother earth is our mother and essentially we were all born at different times different locations different everything so we are going to experience mother nature way differently compared to the next person but it's not even about that we could even be in the same household and experience our mother our maternal figure in different ways um we might have different types of relationships with our parents even though we live under the same household and are taught the same principles and values so i just want us to all um take note of that because a lot of the times people will be like but how is it that um you know siblings that are like 2 3 years apart were raised by the same person but you know have completely different lives and this is the reason for it honestly in my opinion when it's relating to astrology specifically and relating to when we are discussing the natal chart um so there's also a connection to the moon and women's cycles Um you know just as the moon goes through cycles I think so do women we as women go through a period literally no pun intended <laughs> where we shed our egg or eggs for that matter if they have not been um penetrated so to speak also no pun intended Um we also have a time where our egg is essentially built up in inverted commas and sent out in inverted commas again to patiently wait for a companion to start the gestational process. So, you know, as you can imagine this greatly impacts our moods, you know, which is kind of ironic considering the moon controls our 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 emotions in astrology, but you know, I suppose there's no surprises there because naturally there are no coincidences. um when it comes to studying sciences you start realizing that actually everything is interconnected we are not as different as we think we are and that those differences really are just labels um you know projected into society but we essentially we see our energy we are just the same we are yeah um you know so it's <laughs> You can imagine how all of that is happening in your body, right? And all of this is happening without you telling the body, "Oh, okay, you need to go through this process now. It's been 2 weeks. Now you need to get to work and, you know, you need to start um thickening my lining and start making my uterus do this and that and the fourth." You know, um and this is completely, you know, subconscious. This is something we don't even have to tell our bodies like how amazing are our bodies is it like honestly um our bodies really go through a lot our bodies are exposed to a lot and yet they continue making sure that they are functioning as they should be you know they're doing everything even when we don't treat our bodies the way that we should our bodies still maintain um some some kind of loyalty to us because remember we cannot take for granted the fact that our bodies will always do what they need to do sometimes or eventually at some stage they're going to need some help hopefully we don't get to that point but you know it is a reality for a lot of people um so you know like i said it greatly impacts our moods um which is ironic because you know the moon also represents our moods in you know astrology our temperament So the connection between you know moon, the moon and the woman's cycle is also believed to have come about um as the ancients the ancient ones apparently they prayed you know to Diana which is the goddess of fertility and the goddess of you know safe childbirth um 
So, you know, according to a scientist, I think his name is Vante Arrhenius, according to his findings, um, the moon actually had an effect on the women's cycles. And I think nowadays that connection um, has been interrupted because there's a lot of things going on right now in modern day life. We have so many modern um, life problems, you know, that may have contributed to our natural um, lunar cycles just being thrown off a bit well not even a bit much actually um, you know and even inventions such as birth control and induced labor I think are just one of the modern day inventions which interfere with our natural productive cycles so it makes sense that some of the things that were applicable um, you know way back then maybe 200 300 years ago um, will not be as applicable right now because also our diet has changed, the type of water that we consume has changed, um, the nutrients. Are we even getting any nutrients in the foods that we are currently eating? You know, are we eating according to how nature would intend us to actually be eating? Those are the types of questions that I'd be asking myself actually, <laughs> you know, and I'm just wondering. Okay, so if all if if things have strange, have changed so drastically, I can only imagine how beneficial it would be then to you know to to consume things as nature would have intended. Um, that's still a while to come though. But um, yeah, there are a lot of things that you know just interfere with our natural um, productive cycles, and that's you know it's unfortunate, but it is the world that we are living in. Um, the moon also in astrology is our emotional needs and it's often seen through our moon signs. So, um, you know how a moon in Taurus needs stability and comfort and cuddles and how a moon in Gemini would just need constant mental gymnastics, you know, constant stimulation, um, constant activities to keep their interest, to keep their, um, their curious nature at bay or even at its peak. Um, they have such agile, agile minds that they constantly need to be preoccupied, honestly. Um, so, you know, we all have different needs and it's important that we are aware of them so as not to bleed onto others and and or even project, you know, our own unresolved complexities onto other people. Um, our needs, unfortunately, are one of those things that we just cannot compromise on. Otherwise, if we do, we limit our growth in this current lifetime. Um, and it also it also makes it incredibly difficult to relate to other people if you're just constantly going to have your head up your own body that you can't even be aware of the needs of other people. And even those of yourself, like... You know, self love is the best love, and if you're not trying to know yourself, how are you going to, you know, give the same care and nurture and you know, and all of those good stuff to to people around you? So I think it's really important because it extends beyond just us having ourselves to deal with. Um, the moon in astrology also rules over Cancer, and it's in its exaltation in Taurus, and all that this means is that. You know, the moon is at its best or its most comfortable position when it is in Taurus. Um, cancers are also notorious for, you know, being moody because their emotions are quite changeable, quite fluid. Um, and they change just as quickly as the tides, right? So um, they are also the most in tune with their emotions. And... Um, because they can go through their emotions with such honor. They can really honor their emotions. They can really honor their intuition. They can really honor, um, you know, what's currently going on. They they have a way of just knowing how to just be in the moment sometimes also because, you know, it just depends on the aspects, just depends on the person in totality. So there's a lot of things that obviously can influence them being open or not or them being susceptible to honoring those emotions as they come because remember they change so you know being articulate about those changes and honoring the process is actually something that is quite important and of course again that is just my two cents you know um but i do feel like the intuitive nature helps them in determining how they feel 
and they also know how to best articulate their needs to others moon also rules the fourth house which is the house of family you know the house of home it also rules the relationships you know you'll have with people and you know even pets if you do eventually have pets it's also you know our deepest emotional core because remember that's our roots that's our childhood that's the first portal essentially that we experience in this world so um it's really the deepest parts the deepest you know parts of ourselves um it's our roots it's our genetic herit- inheritance essentially in my next video i will be discussing mercury which is the planet of communication that is definitely exciting and how it all correlates to our birth chart on that note thank you so much for tuning in let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as to what you think about the moon and you know um anything that i may have left out that you feel you would like to share show me some love and subscribe to my channel again your time spent is much appreciated till next time you know what you do so keep doing what you do peace love and most of all light i'm out